Today, Picking Nuggets made a post. It says, Guilt, an opportunity to grow and be free. An 840-word essay. Every time I feel guilt about anything, I try to reflect on its source. Where is it coming from? Is it breaking my own morality and core values, or is it coming from society's voice? I think it's critical to be aware and understand from what place the guilt feeling is coming, because your freedom and growth rely on it. Let's see how by analyzing three different sources of guilt, at least three sources that I've personally experienced, and the consequences of one's response to that feeling. This is in the words of Picking Nuggets. Source one, break of one's own morality. If the guilt feeling is originated from breaking your own moral values, you grow and progress by listening to that feeling and correcting it in your actions to align yourself and again with your own core moral values. On the other hand, if you decide to ignore the disturbance of that feeling, you won't progress. Also, if you stay in this trajectory for long, you start to not like yourself because, quote, self-esteem is just the reputation that you have with yourself. You will always know. This was said by Naval Ravik Ravikant. If you don't like or respect yourself, no one will. And this, will might, this might get you into a downward spiral until you're completely corrupt from yourself and your life becomes darker in all dimensions. Thus we see how critical it is to listen to guilt and when it comes from breaking your own core values. Because your growth, self-esteem, and quality of life rely on this decision. Source 2. Society norms and other people's expectation. If that guilt feeling is originated from breaking society's norms or other people's expectations of you, you're free if you can ignore that disturbance and not let it drive your life. As humans, we're heavily conditioned to care by what other people think of us, to care deeply about the projection of ourselves towards other people, and this is, an under, this is understandable. We played a social status game for so long, even when we were monkeys, that our genes are shaped by it. But if we want to be free beings, we better break off from it. In the past, it may have been dangerous to do this. Maybe you would have been cast out from the tribe and left, tribe and left with no food or prote protection. But in today's world, there's no danger. If we listen and care about guilt that comes from society's voice, we'll be enslaved by it. We'll never live the life we truly want to live, and our life will be shaped by the expectations and desires by, uh, of others. The more neatly you fit in society, the less free you actually are, says Naval Ravikant. Once we figure out how this guilt, kind of guilt is coming from social norms and others' expectation, What's important to keep in mind is that we have no responsibility to live up to their expectations. It's your life, not theirs. Richard Feynman said, you have no responsibility to live up to what other people think you ought to accomplish. I have no responsibility to be like they expect me. It's their mistake, not my failing, end quote. Besides, many of us most successful people in the world ironically started out being losers. People cast out from society because successful to be successful, you must diverge from the crowd. You must go your own way. As Warren Buffett calls it, you must follow your inner scorecard, what you truly want to do, instead of external scorecards or what you purely seek validation and status, or what you do purely to seek validation and status. Thus, if we want to have a live, if, if thus, if we, thus, if we want to live a free and fulfilling life, we must not listen to the kind of guilt that comes from society's and others' expectations. Source three: your thoughts. Now, what if we feel guilty because of some embarrassing thought or something that is unacceptable from society's perspective or even our own morality base? I believe you should ignore this kind of guilt because you're not your thoughts. You're the self who notices everything. The one who notices all the external objects, the external reality, but also the internal objects, feelings, and thoughts. As the renowned author Michael Singer points out, it's better that you just consider all the chatting in your mind as if it was some lunatic roommate living with you. Because this roommate's always judging you, you almost ne and it never shuts up and is constantly wrong about things. I think the mind is a great and useful instrument in the pursuit of examining ourselves and building creative things, but we shouldn't let it run our life 24-7, because then it becomes our master, and it will never shut down its voice. So to recap, 
We've seen how important it is to understand the root feeling of guilt. Depending on its source and how we decide to respond to it, our freedom, growth, self-love, and quality of life is at stake. Listen only to the guilt that comes from your own morality. And that was uh, from picking, nub picking Nuggets. This is a response that I wrote to that. And these are my words. This resonates deeply and really explains in Crayola style what a lot of us go through with regards to inner conflict and outer expectations that we hold ourselves to. My own inner conflict is a matter of great significance to me in my life. I worry that I made the wrong decision when I was still very young and immature. At the time, having lived through my own personal experience up to that point, I made a decision that no one around me ever made, to my knowledge, in my circle or family of friends. In a way, I felt as if I was willingly casting myself out from every person that I've ever loved because of this. For the last couple of decades, I felt as if the chunk of my soul had been ripped out. I have went through a lot of, uh, and a lot being an understatement, of personal growth and development in this time since then, and since then I've never really been able to completely feel whole regardless. This will continue to be something I wrestle with, but in the years that have passed, the radiation exposure to these mental and emotional wounds has decreased, and I kind of feel guilty about this at times, and I can sometimes look at them with less grief. Whether or not I made the best decision remains to be seen, but I was honest and I've kept my word and earnestly have been attempting to do better in my life. Now I try to be a beacon of light both to myself and those around me to the best of my ability. I fight against my people-pleasing tendencies and self-doubt in hopes that I can continue to make worthy sacrifices. The movie Constantine comes to mind when I think about this. Bless you, whoever's reading or listening to this, and I genuinely hope that I can be an example to others in a way that only I can be of what is perceived as good or bad in their or my own eyes.